This was February 28th, 2019. Okay. And this was the earth. This Bernie's thing didn't even take off. And we were like, if we want Bernie to win, we want to make him anti. You know, we were, we were coming from that perspective. So I wrote, I'm going to read it out to you. Many in the Eidos community are up in arms what they perceive to be Sanders' reluctance and fully supporting reparations, and Sanders' supposed proclivity to pander to the alt-right vote. Sanders, for example, has said that not everyone who voted for Trump is a racist or a sexist and continually emphasized winning the white working class, despite that many voted Trump. Understandably, this has angered and disappointed many from Eidos' community since the words appear to come at their expense. Why pander to the white vote? Why speak of white communities left behind when conditions faced by black Americans are worse? This line of reasoning is mistaken. Sanders is not talking about the white working class as opposed to black Americans. He is talking about the rural white working class as opposed to the coastal, suburban, and business elite. He is not talking about the poor, the, the white poor as opposed to the black poor. He is talking about the poor whites as opposed to the hypocritical white liberal gentrifiers, suburban whites, and Wall Street, etc. Okay? He is talking about the difference between rural white America and metropolitan white America. For Sanders, the issue is eternal to white America itself and does not come at the expense of the goals of Eidos. As for the alt-right and the racism inherent to white America as a whole, let us ask the question of where this alt-right ideology originates, which is which segments of white America ultimately benefit. The alt-right originates not from the rural white working class, but from suburban white youths and from Silicon Valley. As, the racist, as racist as the white working class may be, it was primarily opposition to the establishment, to coddled white metropolitan liberals, the same people who gentrify black communities, that ultimately led them to vote for Trump and not the alt-right ideology of white boys living in their mom's basement. It is true that the white working class is racist, has historically benefited from institutional racism, and continues to. But this benefit does not last forever. It is always proves to be temporary. Whether it be racist Southern Democrats of the early 1900s or Trump today, once the racist white leaders gained power, it always turned against the white working class swindled by them. This is now especially the case today. When the white working class voted for Trump, they did so following the lead of the upper segments of the white middle class and white business owners. Then, with Trump's tax breaks for the rich and his continued attacks on federal programs once benefiting them, this same white elite benefited from the white working class, soon became aware and is increasingly aware that they were cheated. Keep in mind, guys, this was 2019 in February. So at this time, we thought Bernie still had a fighting chance, which is why we um, were going against Trump like this, right? Um, because we believe that there was like a working class discontent with Trump, that Trump's base was discontented with him and that there's Bernie has a chance to win these people. Obviously, now we know that the rot of the Democratic Party was much, much, much deeper than we anticipated at this time. But the main thing is that theoretically, my identification with. Well, let's just continue reading it and you'll see. Now, what does this mean for Eidos? There are major obstacles to achieving reparations for American descendants of slavery. The first and foremost obstacle is not the white working class. It is the hypocritical white liberals who run the democratic establishment. There you go. So what I told Haik was the same thing as what I wrote here. Now, I, I made more of an emphasis to acknowledge because I was addressing the black people. But yes, I acknowledge your experience that there's racism to the core. We acknowledge that. Now, there's no use in telling Hake this because what's the point, right? There's no use. It, it may be true, but what, you, what good is it pointing it out? What's the practical consequence of doing that, right? What would I be trying to say? That what, you should feel bad for it or something? No, that, that would not be a meaningful confrontation with Hake's racism or the racism of, of his viewers. Obviously, yes. White people are racist. We're all racist in this country. Everyone's racist, right? But that's not because we're bad people. It's, again, it's a structural thing. We all have racist prejudices within us. You don't believe me? We do. We fucking do. The question is, how do you address that racism? And unlike the liberals, I don't think you address that racism 
by repenting and feeling guilty, I think we need to have mutual respect and mutual boundaries of understanding that, you know, um, we have different backgrounds. That's what I believe. I've said this before. Everyone's racist, right? Everyone's got racial prejudices. Everybody, right? Tonally, I didn't. So you could see like the tone is different. But in substance, I am saying the same thing that I told Hake three years ago. Three years ago. A little less than three years ago. You understand? Now, now let me ask you this question. Where was Vosh three years ago? Might I ask you? Where was Bausch three years ago? Was he anywhere near the level of consistency that I, that I was at? Wonder. Yeah, probably in 4chan. Fucking loser. Let's continue. Um, looking at the data from the midterm elections of 2018, the Democrats increasingly gained support from the white suburbs. The Democrats now represent both the gentrifier city whites as well as the upper middle class suburban whites. The rural white working class that supported Trump did not show up either for the Democrats or the Republicans in large numbers. Now that's changed. That changed in 2020 because of the Democrats. It's going to change in 2022 because of the Democrats. They have pushed these people who in the 2018 midterms were not very enthusiastic about voting. They, they, it's super polarized now. So yes, now they're very fanatically pro-Trump. 2018, that was not the case. It was way more ambiguous back then, and Bernie did have a chance. He did have a chance. He had a fighting chance. Now with Biden and COVID and all this shit, whew, it's bad, you know, for them. They mostly stayed home because they didn't like the Democratic establishment and many also feel betrayed by Trump's actions. If the same thing happens during the Democratic primaries, the gentrifier and suburban whites will absolutely dominate in determining which Democratic candidate will get picked. And this will make the goals of Eidos impossible. The white liberals and suburban whites have the most to lose from reparations. I mean, three years later, Biden's president. We are Reparations is a pipe dream right now. No one's even talking about reparations. It's a fucking pipe dream, right? They stand to lose the most from the empowerment of black communities because it would turn the tides against white gentrification and would funnel money, resource, and possibly even land away from the new class of white suburban whites. The white working class may be racist, but they're not gentrifying black communities and they live in old, crumbling communities unlike the new suburban whites. Bernie Sanders' ability to win over the rural white working class offers the only platform for real reparations. Unlike the liars Warren, Harris, and others who will make empty promises and fail to deliver as soon as they're in office. Well, we're here. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> here we are. Harris is the vice president of this country. She's made absolutely no effort for reparations. It's not happening. It's not going to happen. There's no way it'll happen. Um, Eidos does not have to put its full trust in Bernie Sanders or the white working class. But with Sanders, realizing Eidos' goals is possible. With the white liberal elite, it isn't. If Eidos entered into a strategic alliance with Sanders, who can win over segments of the rural whites, while at the same time maintaining its independence and always holding the alliance accountable, then reparations can be... This is... Keep in mind, I'm being very, like, generous in good faith here, because I thought these rad libs were, like, real leaders of the black community, and they're not. I know that now, right? But I was, like, pandering to the fucking rad lib shit. Like, yeah, I keep holding them accountable and whatever, like, I don't know. You know, now my perspective's changed, and I don't think I would say the same thing in the same way. But in substance, my position's the same, right? Then reparations can be part of a real national platform and not an empty promise. That is because the common enemy of both Eidos and other groups, including many rural whites, is the coastal white establishment elite, Wall Street, Silicon Valley, and big industry. With rural whites, the possibility of plain-faced, respectable dialogue is possible, and racism can be dealt with openly. It can be brought to face Eidos community as equals and respected partners in a struggle against a common foe. This will require hard work and patience on Bernie Sanders' side and struggling with many segments of rural white America, but it can happen. It is Sanders' side's responsibility to fight against white working class racism and ignorance. 
Instead of attacking Bernie, Ados can formulate James Cooley and directly organize to establish black political independence and push his agenda to the top of Sanders' movement as the sole condition of winning over the black vote. Both the black vote and the rural white working class are necessary for Sanders' to win. Suburban and gentrifying metropolitan America, aka the leftists, will never in a thousand years support Bernie Sanders or Ados. The professional class will never support Bernie Sanders or Ados. Only a strategic alliance between black America and rural working class can ensure the victory of the struggle for reparations. Rural whites do not stand to lose anything from reparations, but have, like the majority of all other Americans, everything to gain from Medicare for All, infrastructural overhaul, new federal jobs programs, a living wage, and free college for their children. Reparations and black empowerment will never be possible for as long as this rotten establishment, which has everything to lose from it, is able to survive another day. The best course of action is anything which can bring it down and open up opportunities not currently possible. There you go. So textual evidence that this has been my position for years. It's not, I was not pandering to Hake, as Walsh alleges. That's direct evidence. Uh, we're being very proletarian here today. Yeah, this is kinked pride. Holy shit. The fuck, the complete spinelessness. Jesus fuck. I'm so But he's calling it spinelessness, then what does it mean to have a spine? Because as I've just shown, that has been my position forever, right? For as long as we can see a writing of me, right? Writings by me. In 20, 2019, it's been my position. It's not spineless at all. 